Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm very excited for lunch today because we're going to JL Smokehouse Barbecue. And Pitmaster James, he just looks like an amazing guy. He's full of energy and positivity. <laughs> and he's also legendary. He's known for his pulled pork. Oh man. And his ribs. It's gonna be an incredible meal and I'm gonna share everything with you right now. It's a blazing hot day in Phoenix today. The sun is shining. And so the location here, we are in South Phoenix. We're on 24th Street and Broadway around this area. There's a church over on this side. Jail Smokehouse is right here. And already outside, you just smell the smoke just pouring from this entire side of the street. It's gonna be so good. Let's go inside. Very good, how are you today? We came inside, we immediately placed our order, uh, got the slugger pack, which is, includes almost everything, plus a, an entire rack of ribs. And now just in the kitchen, um, and they're chopping up the meat. The aroma in here is just unbelievable. Oh, these are rib tips. All right. Nice. That's a brisket? Yes, sir. Beautiful. Oh man, it smells so good. Mm. Is that the classic sauce? Yeah. House sauce? Only one, barbecue sauce. Oh, okay. Yep. That's the barbecue sauce. So you're seasoning the pork ribs. Season. Okay. We call it special, it's not that. It's special. Oh, okay, it's not what's in the, no. what, uh, what the bottle says. No. That's a distraction. Okay. Your, your blend of spices. Yes. Pulled pork, best in the country, man. Oh man, I agree. You can taste that in the cooking, in the uh, smoking, yeah. for sure. The proper way to cook a rib is to cook it bone down. Okay. You might see a lot of people do it, and y'all blog it. You see a man cooking a rib with a, like this, with the uh -huh. meat on the grill, just know he's an amateur, okay? Okay. I don't, <laughs> so care, what the, down. I don't care what reputation he got, he's an amateur. So it has to be boned down on the smoker. I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna okay. take it out there to the smoker. <laughs> you see it any other way. Okay. He's a, he's an amateur. <laughs> and you got a lot of amateur even on TV. Yes. <laughs> they on TV, but they amateur. <laughs> and how long have you been smoking? 30 years. Wow. That's right here. Bone down, that will never ever get flipped. Never. Okay. If you flip a rib, you are an amateur. <laughs> and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And how long do these smoke for? Three hours. Three hours, okay. This is for the even time. Okay. We're loading up now for the even time. While I'm here, I'm gonna show you something. Okay. I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay. And I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna show you why I got the best pulled pork in the country. Awesome. I'm gonna show you why. <laughs> awesome. Do you normally go by James or JL? JL. JL. I'm James Lewis. Okay, James name, Lewis. But uh, I go JL. by JL. JL. Uh -huh. yeah. So he's just showing us the smoker here and the, putting it on those ribs. And I'm showing you why I got the best pulled pork in the country. I cannot wait. All right, not here. This is a sweat melt. My fire is really low here. I got my brisket sitting back here chilling. These are briskets up here. They all get, they all are done. And they're gonna get ready to come off. 
my sweat melted is allowing the salt that I put on there to get down to the inside. And so once that rise up to the top, it's got to like a game. Like, no, I meant for you to have your ass down there. So I got to put her back down there where she belongs inside of the meat you see <laughs> and so yes. we don't pull our pulled pork when you order it most places would take a pulled pork shredder I have it over there when I'm doing big catering we keep it all on the bone if you take your meat off your bone what's gonna happen meat gonna dry up once blood start coming no oh, yeah. stop, the, stop the flow true same thing here once you take the meat off this bone it's gonna dry out so keep your meat on the bone you right here I can go anywhere just melts like butter can you see that? Oh man. And it doesn't oh, matter man. where you add in there. And see, when you get a piece of that right there, that's just, that's a piece of heaven. And that's see, just straight and tongs just going to yeah. it like a yeah. Like a and It doesn't butter. matter where you go in there. You can go here, we can go wiggle the bone and the bone will come out. <laughs> you know, all of that good stuff. How long does that smoke this, for? This all been on here since yesterday at 6 30. Oh. So that's like and a, whatever time it is now. That's going on now. like 20 hours. It's been to come off now. It's going on 20 hours All of this has been on since yesterday. Wow. 6.30 yesterday even. Wow. And we're just now finna pull it. So you just keep this smoker going like it 24 never hours stopped. a day. It's 24 hours a day. I gotta give me a piece of that while I did all that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is an honor. Grab it out here. Let's oh, yeah. We can do a toast here. Yeah, toast. Oh. Oh, wow. Your eyes roll back in your head. <laughs> I don't think I can stand up straight after that, but. Wow. It just completely dissolves. It just dissolves in your mouth. You see? <laughs> that is without absurd. Any sauce, none of that stuff is needed. So people look at me crazy when I tell them I got the best full book in the country. But this method that we, yeah. the way we do it. Let me tell you, JL has the best pulled um, pork in the country. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh man. I'm telling you, just the method, the way we go about doing it, not afraid to, to put the salt, because we're knowing how to get the salt to get down in there. Mm. Okay, that's the rack and the tip. Okay. The tip back in the day, this right here, you know, as barbecue in America, started on the slave field. Mm. With mm -hmm. men after American and everything. Mm -hmm. They did not want this part of the, of the uh, rib. They threw it away and gave it to their slaves. Mm. And uh, this right here is where you get your rib tip from. And you come right here and cut it yourself. You got a St. Louis style cut. Arkansas. Arkansas, okay. Right below Memphis. All right. I grew up with Memphis barbecue. Okay. So is that your, I mean, it's your own style, but does it have a, it's what, some, similar to Memphis? Some Memphis influence. Similar to Memphis style? Okay. Some of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. But you can't be, when people try to be regional, because barbecue is done different in different regions. Mm. So people try to go here and, and just put on their building and put on their label. Central Texas barbecue. Well, you know what that tells me? That tells me you got good brisket, you got good smoked sausage, your rib sucks, your pulled pork sucks, and you ain't got much else. But if I'm a big fan of brisket and smoked sausage, I want Texas. Mm -hmm. But if I want good ribs, good pork, pork, pork belly, chicken, rib tips, I want I want Memphis, I want the Mississippi, I want Arkansas, I want Alabama, you know? So awesome. when you just be one face, that's not barbecue to me. Yeah. So I got a little Carolina style. I got, you know, I think I have all of those influences with me, not just Memphis. Okay. You know, when it come down to pulled pork, I'm thinking about how Carolina okay. and how those guys get there to do it. So we make the sauce a little, a little tangy, a little sweet, a little spicy. Oh yeah. You know, and uh, and that that is a combination of Memphis and the Carolinas. Okay. You follow me? Yep. Yeah. For sure. You know, so I'm, I, I totally I, I, understand. I won't, I won't let them put that that label. People exactly. Are exactly. But I think it take away from barbecue. It only goes on one side. Okay. If I put it on both sides, it'll be a little too high. 
Always make your season become one. Act like you're having one season and you're not having another one. Okay. I, I make it become one season. Okay. That's what we're doing with the rub here. One season kind of blending in. So these you do smoke on both sides? Oh yeah. Unlike the ribs? These can be flipped. Okay. Very good corn. I just love the way JL, he puts his love and passion into everything that he's cooking. But then at the same time, just your immense experience is what shines. Oh, your knowledge of barbecue, of every step of the process. Exactly. I would never do anything without a why. If you have too many uh, copycatters out there in the field, you know, a duplicator will never be successful like that. Mm. Uh huh. Do you have a catering inquiry? If you don't know why you're doing something, it should not be done. If you can't listen to the meat, you shouldn't be cooking. Okay. Because the meat would tell you what it want on it. And that's what Hitchhiker yeah. is all about. When we yeah. use that slogan, we don't want to drive, we just want to ride. We don't want to drive, we want to ride. Just, just let us ride along with it. Our sauce is made the same way. It's not a heavy sauce. It's a light sauce just, that just complements your meat. Yeah. It's ride alone, but at the same time, you can take the smoking nets of that pulled pork, the smoking nets of that brisket, the smoking nets of that rib. That sauce doesn't dominate where now you're tasting just the sauce and not the smoke. Mm. Man, I had that stuff out there 21 hours, 22 hours now. I'm not going to destroy it by putting a, uh, one of the most thick sauce that people like in Kansas City like to use. Sorry, Kansas. But I don't do that. You know, I'm sorry, Kansas City, but y'all like to have that thick old sauce that take away from your, your food. And uh, the only person that needs a thick sauce is a person that did not smoke it. Or he didn't smoke it properly. If you smoke it right, you'll need that thick sauce. The way it complements. It it's so incredibly flavorful, yeah. but at the same time, it does complement. What type of wood do you? Mesquite. Mesquite, okay. Mm -hmm. Where I come from, I was using hickory. Okay. Hickory, oak. Yeah, that's just radiating heat. So much heat coming out of there. Like tic-tac-toe. Okay, Put so one, stack one it. way. Stack it up. Tic-tac-toe. Now a lot of airflow okay. comes through. Oh, and those are so dry, they just immediately start burning. That's pretty Man. good, pretty hot, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's pretty so hot, you're lean. It's a problem. <laughs> wow. I want it on the low end. This is very important in smoking. Come over here, come over here. I'm going to show you guys something. Come this way now. Everything is coming in. Everything gonna come in this way, but it gotta release out. It gonna come in, it gonna go all throughout the smoker, it gonna go that pathway. But then it gotta exit out. If I have too much of it to stay inside of the smoker, my food is gonna be like gas. The more you leave the door open, the more air I allow in. And now if I do this here, uh, that I'm telling it now the to chimney, just, and I'm also increasing the fire. Now watch how that fire is going to increase. It's going to increase because of the airflow. See, another thing about smoking meat, it's controlling the airflow. If you don't control the airflow, you're not going to be able to cook mm. properly. We don't do a lot with this. That's my temperature. Okay, that's at 300. Okay, but. That's not no. me. It's about, it's about the, the love, it. your heart, yeah. and experience. For yeah. sure. Barbecue for sure. in two ways. It's signs and heart. Mm. White folks use signs, black folks use heart. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's pretty awesome. much the way it is in America. Awesome. Most of the time. I can't stereotype everybody, but that's <laughs> most of the way it is. I love JL. He is a man of passion, a man of knowledge, and just a man who 
just takes ultimate pride in his barbecue and and it shows now uh, we're gonna go inside and I think Kevin is gonna assemble our entire barbecue platter and everything that we ordered because uh, they're getting really busy inside for the lunch rush. Yep, I think that's our order next. Is your name Kevin? Yeah. Kevin, yeah. very nice to meet you. You too, what's your name man? Mark. Nice to meet you. Mark. Nice to meet you. tell the amount of flavor that that's gonna be. The smokiness plus the layer of the tangy barbecue sauce. Oh man. Okay, so the last meat that goes on to the slugger combo is the smoked bologna. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Hey, we're heading to the smoker to grab a rack of ribs. I think that's the last part of our order. Oh man. Oh man, yeah. Been on about two, beauty. maybe an hour and a half or so. Okay. Grab two of them. Okay, cool, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Are you guys gonna eat right now? Yes. Okay. Yep. I have this rack coming to the table. Thank you very much. Do you normally sauce the ribs too? Yeah, you want them sauce or you want to wait till you pull it apart? Um, yeah, maybe after. Okay, they're gonna keep this like this. Are you guys ready for a table? Ready for a table, yeah. Right. Maybe go outside to eat. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Yeah, we'll go outside, yeah. That rack of ribs. Thank you, Kevin. After walking around the, the barbecue pits, after hanging out with James and Kevin, I cannot wait to try the barbecue. Or the slugger combo. Oh yeah, I immediately opened that up and just that poof of barbecue sauce. Oh yeah, everything is piping hot too. Got the mac and cheese, collard greens and the barbecue beans. Finally, we got the whole rack of ribs. And again, I just love how they assemble all the meats, chop up all the meats, and then just lather it. Just give it a hose down, a spray down, a bath of barbecue sauce. You could just smell the tanginess, the fierceness of that barbecue sauce. I have to go pulled pork first. And this is one of his most famous meats, which Chef James, Pitmaster James, says it's some of the best pulled pork you will ever have. is not joking or exaggerating at all. That pulled pork is insane. Oh, it just melts in your mouth. The smokiness of it, the flakiness of it, and then that barbecue sauce. Oh man, it is as good, it's actually better than it smells and it smells unbelievable. Okay, should we try the brisket next? Brisket again, just smothered in the sauce. There's the fatty part and the the leaner part, I think, is on the top here. Look at that drip. The texture of that brisket and the way it just kind of like kernels. You feel like the kernels just coming apart, flaking in your mouth. Try some of that mac and cheese next. And I think I saw everybody ordering the macaroni and cheese. So soft and so cheesy. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Okay, so we got two different types of sausage. 
can't exactly remember. I think this one is the hot link and this one is the smoked sausage. Try that hot link first. And I can guarantee you that every bite, you're gonna wanna just like scoop up and wipe up as much of that barbecue sauce on the bottom there as you can. I think that's the hot links. Just a little bit spicy, but you taste the flavor of the chili. That, I love that outer casing, the snap of it. I'm gonna balance that off with some collard greens. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, that's awesome. It, it's actually really smoky tasting, and then very like salty but not rich. Okay, next up I'm gonna go for the bologna, the smoked bologna. It's been so many years since I've had bologna, and even on top of that, I don't think I've ever had smoked bologna in my life, so this will be my first time for smoked bologna, which uh, James said that they smoke it, and then they pan fry it to sear it off on those edges. But here we go, smoked bologna, and again, whoa. <laughs> that slides off the board pretty easily. It's pretty good. Um, probably not my favorite meat on the platter, but it is tasty, without a doubt, it's tasty. It's a really, really smooth kind of texture. Okay, next up for the rib tips. The rib tips, it does have the, the bone, just like the end of the bone in it, I think, so it's more like cartilage -y. so you can chew down, you can bite down on that entire, the entire thing, I believe. Oh wow, yes, rib tips are amazing. So many different textures. If you do get a piece of that cartilage, it's like almost crispy. And then you've got the, the outer casing is just a little bit crunchy and so smoky. And then the inside, sometimes you get a mix of fat. Rib tips are amazing just because of those different textures and the different like ratios of fattiness. Okay, last meat on the platter is the, the smoked sausage. Oh wow, that is juicy fatty. That's the type of sausage that you, you just bite down. You bite into that casing and uh, you can feel the, the juices and the oiliness just squirting, so good. Next up for the barbecue baked beans. Mm. Those beans are so soft. And then you taste a little bit of a sweetness a little bit of a spice to it. Mmm, awesome. And then the last meat that we got is the entire rack of ribs, and these are still so hot, you can barely pick it up. All that smoke inside of it that has just been building up. Oh man, I think we can just kinda tear into it. Oh, look at the inside of it, it's so juicy. All oh, the bone is just completely clean. And typically, I believe they would slice it down the bones every, every piece, but I just thought it would be cool to to leave it whole, so we got it whole. And now you can just pick it up, you can tear it, and you can just fully, fully enjoy the juices. Mm. Oh wow, the fattiness, crunchiness, the mixture of juices, but definitely, I'm addicted to that barbecue sauce. I'm just gonna pour it on here. All right, and then we'll save that sauce for dipping other meats. Oh, and reduce, redip that. Oh yeah, you have to have the sauce. That just balances the entire flavor. Rounds it out just bursting with flavor. And one of his slogans here is get some south in your mouth. And that, oh man, that is south in your mouth. Yeah, that smoke just goes all the way to the bone. 
I think for me, okay, the brisket is amazing, but I think for me what really stands out is that pulled pork. The pulled pork, oh man, it's just the perfect texture, the perfect fattiness, and then again, I cannot emphasize enough what just makes it next level is that barbecue sauce. Man, that barbecue sauce is just out of control. I'm just gonna go ahead and submerge. That yeah, pulled pork. And another thing that I've seen about JL Smokehouse Barbecue is that this, I mean, along with the amazing barbecue, along with the friendliness of the owner, this place is really a kind of a community center. People come here, regulars, people that come here, you can tell that they come here frequently or once a week. It's a place to come together, to meet, to hang out, to just build community. And that's exactly what food does, which is it just uplifts people. It, builds us up together. And that's another huge aspect that I've seen just spending a couple hours here and meeting a lot of friendly people while we're sitting out here while we're in the restaurant. The best part is just digging into that meat, I think at the bottom, because all the, all the oily juices and all the barbecue sauce has just accumulated down there. Video. Keep up send the. Me, send me some videos, okay? We'll do. We'll do. I appreciate. Keep that. up the amazing work. And let me know. Thank when you so much let for me know when, you, when you post and we'll all do. that. We'll do. I, lo I love to see. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Thank man. you for your hospitality. Thank you so much. Thank and you amazing. so much. Okay. Amazing. And so that wraps up one of the most memorable barbecue meal experiences that I've ever had. JL, his personality, his knowledge, his experience, and just his unbelievable love that he undeniably just pours into everything that he does. He is a wealth of knowledge of barbecue. In just an hour or two hanging out with JL, I learned so much. I, I learned more than I've ever learned about barbecue, about the technique, about how it's a combination of dry rub, smoke, and sauce. Yet the sauce, even though the sauce was probably my, my favorite barbecue sauce I've ever had, it's his philosophy is that it's not just about the sauce. Uh, the sauce is not overpowering the meat, but it's complementing the meat. So that's gonna wrap it up. I wanna say a huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click the little bell icon. That way you'll immediately get notified of the next video that I publish. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Phoenix, Arizona, and I will see you on the next video.